I respect your time, so I'll get straight to the point. If you already own an M1 base Mac, I don't think it's going to be worth the money to upgrade to an M3 base system. If you watch the rest of this video, you'll see that I actually ordered an M3 base MacBook Pro. It got lost in the mail, and I'm glad it did because I don't think I would have noticed $2,000 worth of performance difference between my M1 MacBook Air and an M3 Pro based MacBook Pro. So that's just my German buying advice. I don't think it's worth it to M3. And as I say at the very end of this video, I'm waiting for M4. All right, here's the review. Nearly two years ago, I sat in this chair and I said the M1 MacBook Air is the best computer I have ever owned. And two years after recording that video, I can still say that this is probably the best and definitely the most favorite computer that I've ever owned from Apple or any other manufacturer. Let's talk about the specs. Now this system has the 8-core CPU with 4 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. It has the binned 7-core GPU, which really does make a difference. In terms of storage, it has 1 terabyte of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now my philosophy whenever I buy a new MacBook is I like to throw as much money as I can as possible to pretty much future-proof it. So with the 1 terabyte SSD and the 16 gigs of RAM, this system came out to $1439 because I was able to get hooked up with an education discount. For any laptop to be worth its weight in salt, it has to excel in these four areas. Battery life, keyboard, trackpad, and display. Let's talk about display first because that's the first thing you're going to notice when you're looking at the M1 MacBook Air. Now, the display on this is not the brightest. It's rated at 400 nits of brightness. If you compare that to a modern M2 or M3 MacBook Air, those displays are rated at 500 nits of brightness. However, when you're using this computer indoors and the display doesn't have too many reflections on it, it is perfectly acceptable to look at this display and you'll be able to see everything on screen as long as you're indoors in your house, for example, and you don't have direct sunlight beaming onto this display. When I first got this computer, I could easily get 12 hours of battery life as long as I'm not pushing the system. Now, in November of 2023, I decided to swap out the battery because the battery health had degraded down to 83%. 10 months after swapping out the battery, I can tell you that the maximum charge held is at 92%. So no longer am I able to get 12 hours of battery life. Right now, the battery capacity sits at around 8 hours of usable battery life as long as I am not taxing the system by doing things like handbrake encoding or editing files in Final Cut. Keyboard and trackpad, best in the business. And in fact, it is the keyboard that has enough travel to it so I can get feedback when I'm typing. And I can type pretty fast on this keyboard when I really want to. Also, when it comes to the trackpad, the gestures, the haptic feedback, this trackpad does not move physically, but it has a taptic engine underneath it that simulates the press. And the great thing about these trackpads is you can click anywhere on the trackpad and it'll be able to register a click. If you already own an M1 Mac, should you consider moving to the M3? Now, I thought a lot about this question because I actually ordered a refurbished 14-inch M3 Pro MacBook Pro with the 12-core CPU and the 18-core GPU. However, I didn't receive that system because it got lost in the mail, so I never received it. But in a way, I'm kind of glad that I didn't get it for a couple of reasons. First off is the fans and the fan noise. Now, as we all know that the MacBook Air doesn't have a fan. It's completely solid state, no moving parts, and it is 100% dead quiet. Now, when I read some of the reviews about the 14-inch M3 MacBook Pro, I did see that the fans would spin up after doing, like, you know, moderate video editing, say, in Final Cut. So either on exporting or transcoding video, that's when the fans are going to spin up. And I can tell you that after having a M1 MacBook Air, you get spoiled by completely silent computing. And the thing that I really wanted the MacBook Pro for was to improve the performance of exporting videos in Final Cut Pro. So the issue with that is, let's say the M3 MacBook Pro can do it in 7 minutes, and it takes my MacBook Air 14 minutes. Does that really justify spending $2,000 for a 14-inch MacBook Pro? And after thinking about it, you know, YouTube is not my job. YouTube is just basically my hobby. And, you know, considering that I'm not getting paid to make these videos, it really doesn't matter to me. So let's say my, my MacBook Air takes... 14 minutes and the MacBook Pro takes seven. 
it really doesn't make that much of a difference for me. So after four years of everyday use, how well has this laptop held up? Well, I can say that the build quality of basically any Apple product is very robust. And I can say the exact same thing about this. So over four years of time, the hinge is still as tight as ever. It basically feels like day one, there's no looseness in the hinge. The display is very rigid. The keyboard, the magic keyboard works perfectly, unlike the old school butterfly keyboards. And the trackpad holds up perfectly well. So basically in terms of using this laptop day in, day out, it feels the same way as it did when I first got, got it out of the box day one. The only small minor thing about this is that the anodization around the USB ports are kind of uh, flaking off, but aside from that, this thing looks brand new. So as long as you treat any Apple product with respect, it's gonna last you for years and years. How does the M1 MacBook Air stack up in 2024? Well, two influencers that influenced my decision not to keep the M3 MacBook Pro are both Marquez and the British YouTuber named Mark Ellis Reviews. Now, in the case of Marquez, he has the ability to purchase any computer that he wants. And I believe he still does a lot of his work on a 2019 Mac Pro with 768 gigabytes of RAM. So him purchasing an M3 uh, Max MacBook Pro is basically like monopoly money to him. And he said at the end of his review that the M1 Max MacBook Pro does everything that he needs it to do, and he doesn't feel the need to upgrade to the M3 Max. When it comes to Mark Ellis, he said that he purchased a 14-inch M3 Max MacBook Pro for 4,000 pounds. And he said comparing his M3 Max to his previous M1 Max, it really didn't make that much of a difference day to day. And I think in his video, he said that he somewhat regretted purchasing such an expensive computer. Yes, it does help out on his export times and doing his really rigorous tasks on an M3 Max. However, I think he had buyer's remorse and he said that like, well, I could have probably stayed on the M1 Max. So given those YouTubers who have the ability to budget for a really high-end system and for them to say that the M1 Max doesn't really make that much of a difference, really spur me on to say that I'm keeping my M1 MacBook Air because the M1 chip on day-to-day -day tasks really does a good job. And if they're saying that the M1 versus the M3 doesn't make that much of a difference, it doesn't make sense for me to, to get rid of my M1 MacBook Air and try to upgrade to an M3 Pro. So given that, what I, what I am really waiting for at this point is I'm waiting for the M4 MacBook Air to come out for two reasons, because I'm hoping there are enough architectural changes between the M1 and the M4 to where I will see a difference in daily use between the two chips. Also, Apple Intelligence is set to come out next year, all of the features. So even though you can run Apple Intelligence on the M1, M2, and the M3, I think it's gonna run a lot more smoother and faster on the M4 because Apple redesigned the Neural Engine. So when you put all of those things together between not getting the M3, holding out for the M4, I'm gonna say that my M1 MacBook Air, which is the most basic chip that, it, that Apple Silicon has, I'm going to say, I'm going to hold on to this thing. I'm going to enjoy it for a couple of more months. And I'm going to hold out for the M4. All right. Start it. Peace.